And, and from here, Serper just plays uh, really brilliant chess and does not let Black uh, have any chance of this. Let me get rid of all this stuff here. So here, Serper plays a good move. He plays, oh, sorry, knight f2 first, knight f8, and, and yeah, now comes the, uh, the spectacular chess, a4. Now, this is kind of a normal idea. Black does not really want to allow, well, he, he doesn't, well, sorry. Let me start this, this sentence over again. White threatens to play a takes b5, taking advantage of the, the pin here. So if c takes b5, I can take with the knight or the bishop. Now, what I, what I was trying to say is that black doesn't want to play either of two things. He doesn't really want to play b4, but it looks like the best option. But the, the downside of b4, at least the obvious downside of the b4 push, is that it surrenders the, the c4 square. So you might think, well, okay, let's play bishop to b7 and protect the rook. You can do that, but this bishop is terrible here on, on b7. I mean, it's just blocked by this guy and, well, blocked this way as well. So this is really very, very unpleasant. So he did decide to play b4 after all. But now here comes the fun. Knight to d5, great move. All right, black clearly cannot abide this knight. I mean, it, it threatens the queen. It threatens to go to b6. This pawn on b4 is hanging. So black really has to take, unless this just loses on the spot. I mean, it's the only uh, playable move. So e takes d5, and white's only got one pawn for the piece, but these two connected pass pawns are very, very strong. And he's also looking to grab a second pawn, and uh, if black plays a5, then he's got to wear out bishop to b5 check ideas. The knight's ready to come to e4, so there's also jumping in to d6. Maybe the bishop comes to g5. So white's pieces are all just magnificently active, and again, the two passed pawns are, are incredibly powerful as well. So already black is, uh, is facing difficulties. So he plays f5, grabbing some space, and threatening to play f4, simply trapping the bishop. Uh, f5 also takes away the e4 square from white's knight, so it makes very good sense. So white played d6, black played queen to c6, uh, and, and by the way, let's keep, keep track here. So first, on move 17, White sacrificed his queen's knight. So one piece sacrificed, six to go. So now comes sacrifice number two, bishop to b5. So this is, this is fantastic. Of course, black has to take or he loses the queen. A takes b5. And now white sacrificed the queen's knight and the king's bishop. Okay, so what does black do? In the game, he decided to, uh, to just play queen takes b5 and not let white enjoy this, this uh, horde of three connected past pawns. Perhaps the best move here was uh, queen to b7, and after c6, then rook takes a1. cb, rook f1, king f1, bishop takes b7. So here black has uh, a rook and a bishop for the queen. The problem, though, is that white has these great pawns on the queen side. And um, after queen takes b4, let's say, or, or maybe even better, um, knight to d3, White has a pretty substantial advantage, but maybe not winning yet. So this might have been Black's best chance. So in the game, as I said, he played queen b5, preferring to return material, but um, at least hope to construct a, a blockade of these, these, uh, these pawns. So rook a8, queen c6, rook f to a1, and this is sacrifice number three here, f4, goodbye bishop, right? So this is, this is pretty impressive. Well, what does white do here? He plays rook 1 to a7, and black does not take just yet. If he takes, then white plays rook takes bishop, queen takes rook, rook e7 check, king d8, queen b4, who needs the knight, he takes f2, king f2, and there's no good answer to the threat of a check on the a5 d8 diagonal. I mean, you can stop one check or the other, but there's no reasonable way to stop both. Like if you play queen a6, then just queen to b8 forces the queen back, and then queen to b6 after all. So black is just uh, just losing here. All right, so Nicolaitis was more resilient. He did not play f takes e3 straight away, but played knight to d7 instead. So now here comes sacrifice number four. And by the way, note that the, the queen bishop is still stuck. I mean, it's not running away. So now it's time to sacrifice the queen's rook. Rook takes c8 check. Uh, queen c8 is forced. And now queen d5. So uh, here, finally, black cashes in on the, uh, the third sacrifice. 
And now queen e6, king f8. Of course, king d8, queen e7 is mate, so that's forced. And now rook takes d7, so he sacrifices the other knight as well. And it is a real sacrifice because he could have moved the knight away, and this guy can't escape because of, of queen f7. Or, sorry, uh, he can't save it because uh, and he can't run away like that, but what black can do here is play knight h to f6. Uh, or, sorry, first e2, king f2, knight h to f6, and, and here we have kind of a, a magnificent problem move. White's move and win. There's only one move that does it, and it's, it's pretty, pretty fantastic. So the only move to win here for white, everything else is equal, or maybe, maybe there's one move that's slight, very slightly better for white, but only one move to keep anything like a winning advantage. And that is king to e1. So not king e2, that might be a tiny bit better, and not anything else, not knight to g5, or any other really you know, super aggressive move like work to c7, but king e1. And this just safeguards the king from all the checks, from knight takes e4 being check, or sometimes queen takes c5 being a check, and, uh, and, and black is just finished here. So this, is, uh, this would have been beautiful. And in fact, this is maybe even what should have, should have happened. So um, yeah, so this, this is the one sack that's a little bit unclear. So rook takes d7 is what Serper played, but knight e4 was maybe uh, even slightly better, saving the knight. But then he wouldn't have sacrificed all of his pieces. So after rook takes d7, e takes f2, and now an accurate move here, king f1. Okay, if king takes f2, queen c5, and black is, is out and about. Now, here black could engage in a little counter-sacrifice of his own. Uh, in the game, he played queen to, uh, to e8. And this, this met a beautiful reputation. So another idea is queen a6, king f2, and then queen to e2 check, forcing the queens off the board. Because uh, if white plays king to g1, queen e1's mate, and even aside from the mate, black could just renew the sacrifice with queen g2, king g2, and then still knight f4. So king e2 is, of course, forced, knight f4 check. Let's say king f1, just getting out of checking range of all of black's minor pieces, and, well, all of his pieces, period. Um, and now knight takes e6. And here, though, white wins with um, c6, king to g8, clearing um, f8 for some pieces, for the bishop in particular. And now rook e7, bishop f8, rook e6, king f7, d7, bishop e7, c7, takes, and then white queens and, and wins. So this was um, another try for black. Inadequate, ultimately, but... Interesting, too. So instead of this, uh, Nicolaitis played queen e8. And now there's a beautiful refutation of this one. So it's time to sacrifice the other rook. Rook f7 check. So this is great. Queen f7, queen c8 check. Queen e8, only legal move. And now d7. All right. So the only move here for black um, to, to make somewhat of a fight of it is, in fact, just to take the queen. So takes, takes, king f7, or king e7, doesn't matter. Queen c7, king f6, queen d6, and um, white is pretty pretty likely to win this position, but maybe it's not 100% um, settled just yet. So this was black's last try, but understandably he didn't do this. So he played king f7, takes and takes, and uh, remember this is still the original queen, so we still have to have this, this piece be sacrificed as well, and it happens. So white plays queen and b7 check. Black played rook to e7, and here it is, c6. So the very last bit of the white army gets sacrificed. E3, uh, e4, so going for whatever counterplay you can muster here. And it's a little trick. I mean, if f takes e4, then black wins. He takes the queen and plays bishop to e5, covering the queening square. So you've got to be careful. It's almost never too late to blow a game. So after e4, white was, of course, alert to this possibility and played c7. Black to e3, and we still have to sacrifice that queen. So it's not just that it's offered, but in every case, the sacrifice was ultimately accepted. So Serker played queen to d5 check, king f6, queen d6 check, king f7. And, of course, he, he has to sack the queen, because if he makes his own queen, then he just gets mated. So it's not just a matter of aesthetics here. It's, it's a matter of necessity. If he wants to win the game, he has to play um, the sacrifice. Yeah, he repeated the position first. Well, once, I'm sure they were in lots of time trouble, and then he sacked the queen and makes a new one. 
All right, so here, finally, white is winning, but there are still those two very far advanced black pawns to be dealt with. So black uh, comes up with a couple of last little tricks. So bishop h6 defending it, queen c5, king e8, queen b5, king d8, queen d6, and then he takes on g6, so hitting both of the, uh, the black pieces. So black is just about out of, out of business. Uh, certainly if he loses uh, either piece, it's just game over. So time for the last little desperation tries. E2 check. So if king takes e2, the miracle happens, knight f4 check, and black wins. But that would be, that would be terrible. I mean, just, just on general grounds. I mean, unless you're Nicolaitis himself, you've got to want white to win. I mean, just with just the brilliant play that went on earlier, it would be just a crime against aesthetics and chess herself for white not to win. So, of course, Serper played king takes f2. And now, just to finish it on a beautiful note, black plays bishop to e3 check. And there's only one move for white to win. And uh, in a kind of a, a pleasant echo of the variation we saw earlier, it's king to e1. And that's, of course, what Serper played. And here, finally, black resigned. Of course, king takes e3, allows black to queen. King e2 allows black to play knight f4 check once again and pick up the queen. So king e1 was forced and good enough. So a fantastic game. I mean, as I said, this is, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to see many games that can even compare with this uh, in the rest of your life. I mean, and if you, if you have seen games that can compare with this, please let me know about them. And uh, I'd like to, to present them in a subsequent lecture. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, definitely one of my favorite games, and um, I hope it's one of yours too. So thanks a lot, and I will see you next time. Until then, this is Fide Master Dennis Monacrucis signing off.